beautiful Virgo friends and welcome to your horoscope for July of 2020 and Virgo man okay so we come into the month your ruling planet Mercury is still retrograde but the ruler of your second house in the general horoscope Venus is still sitting pretty and direct at the top of your chart which is so beautiful in terms of your work your career your reputation who you are who you're becoming these things have just beautiful energy running through them magnetic energy running through them which is such a nice thing to come into the month with not to mention we're coming into this month with mars in the energy of aries so this is a yes, and this is running through your eighth house. So joint finances, joint connections, joint resources, intimacy, all of these kinds of things really have some solid forward motion. Now, there are going to be some adjustments that I see coming through the month, especially in any joint resources that you've got going on, but we'll talk about that here in a minute. I just want to point out that as we come into the month, though, these are really nice, strong, direct placements that are definitely in your favor, not to mention your rule planet Mercury will come out of retrograde this month as well in the energy of Cancer. All right, Virgos, let's jump in and talk about what's going on this month. Now, right at the beginning of the month, as we come in on July 1st, we're going to see Saturn, who is still retrograde, but now he's going to take that retrograde motion, back it up into the um, energy of Capricorn, so moving back into a fellow Earth energy. But for you, this is going to light up the fifth house. The fifth house is romance, right? Romance and desire and play and self-expression. It's a joy house. It's also the house of children or conception or new beginnings happen in this area as well. There's a lot of play. There's a lot of joyful kind of let's take a risk energy that happens in the fifth house. Now, this is nothing new. As Saturn comes back to this fifth house, you have had your mind on fifth house issues for a very long time, a few years, and it really became intense for you, I think, at the beginning of this year. So whether it was that new job, the baby, the work thing, the art, whatever it is, there's been an intensity and you have been aware of it. Nothing new, right? Now, as Saturn comes back here, he's going to come back and say, in this area, are you organized? Where is the self-discipline? There is no way that we're going to have freedom, that we're going to have this ability to just express and to have all of this liberty and all of this movement if there isn't some kind of structure and self-discipline in this particular area, some kind of organization. So as he comes back, he's just asking you to review what you've already been working on in this area. Now on the 5th, we're going to welcome in a full moon lunar eclipse. Now this is like the third one. We've had them boom, boom, boom. It feels like every other week, right? We've had an eclipse, right? At least since um, June. Now, this one is going to also light up this fifth house space for you. The full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. But at this particular eclipse, what also happens is because the sun and the moon are in opposition, it colors. It opens up so much light, and it really lets you see the true colors of something in front of you, right? So here in this fifth house area, whether it's children, it's the new business, it's a new idea you have, it's romance, whatever it is, you are really able to see the colors, to see the truth of something that's happening in this particular area. Now, if you've had a, a romance that's been going on and it hasn't been going well, there are all of these cracks in the cement, I think that you will definitely address those or let those go. Remember, the full moon says end, acknowledge, or adjust. And you've already been looking at these things. So you're going to need to report back to Saturn, who's come back in that retrograde and said, Virgo, is this area organized? Is there self-discipline here? Is there self-sacrifice? where there needs to be in order to take this thing to the next level. So this particular lunar eclipse in the fifth house, I think definitely speaks to the adjustments that will be made in this particular area. And you will make them over the next six months because the idea here is that you've really got to get some structure so that your actions and your attitudes fit into the big picture that's going to be long term. Remember Saturn and Capricorn, they don't want anything short term. They want something with structure. Now, another thing I want to just bring to your attention is perhaps with, with whatever your fifth house um, 
whatever lights up for you in this fifth house, you may find yourself bumping up against someone or something that has authority and you don't really have a say in it and you're trying to move forward and you are you are just being blocked. You are running right into it. It's like you're trying to move something forward and boom, you are put in a position to be stopped and you don't have a lot of say in it. If that happens, this is an energy where you definitely want to light up and use your patience, okay? So patience, you have a ton of that. You are an earth energy but you are immutable too. So I don't want you to get all worried. Just be patient and understand that this too shall pass, okay? On the 11th, we see Chiron, our wounded healer, heading into retrograde until December. Now, this is going to light up your eighth house area. Chiron is our, is our hole in our soul. We hurt here. We worry here. We are afraid here. But also, this is where the biggest teacher is that we have. Because by understanding our own pain and thus sharing it outward, we get to heal others. Right, It is very much so a position of understanding and self-sacrifice that sets us all free. It's beautiful. Now, here in the eighth house, one of the things I keep thinking is there's been this, you know, to thine own self be true, Virgo, in a joint connection, whether that be with a spouse, with a partner, in some kind of very intimate resource or connection that you have in your life, I think you've been questioning, is this what's right for me? Right? Does this relationship, does this connection belong in my life? Is this the one I feel like I can really deeply ground into to move forward? And only you can answer that. Only you can answer if this connection is really right for your soul. Are you willing to learn and to relook at things in this in your soul life? Um in these connections and that means your your YouTube collaborations. That means your spouse with your finances. That means at a sexual level. That means in your trauma. You know, what What are you looking back at with this Chiron energy here that you are willing to heal from, but also take forward and teach? I am seeing for some of you Virgos as well. This is um, from that lunar eclipse to this Chiron energy, something in a financial plan that you have made or a financial decision you're considering making has not been solid. And you may need to look back over that with this Chiron retrograde. And it may be something that you can't just walk yourself out of. It's going to take you some time, at least to the end of the year, to pull out of whatever this deal was. So if that's you, please put this in the comment section down below. And you should know by around the 11th or the 12th of this month that maybe it wasn't as solid as you thought it was. And you can start to take corrective actions right there. On the 12th, we've got Mercury, your ruling planet, coming out of retrograde in the energy of Cancer, lighting up your 11th house space. Now, in the 11th house space, this is friends, this is organizations, this is social groupings, right? And this is an area that you have, again, been doing a little bit of um, reflection on, I think, especially with Mercury retrograde. It's like, are these my friends? Is this the right social group? Am I aligned the way I want to? What are my social opinions about things? But it's been coming through the lens of being very emotionally intelligent instead of so outwardly reactive, right? So you've really had to stop and breathe in what you think and the evaluations that you're making in this particular area. Now, as Mercury comes direct, remember the stationing day, which is the 12th is usually when it's the toughest we have to really negotiate and re-navigate these energies because it's kind of like social instability at its finest so if you can give yourself a break and not make any big decisions until a couple days later I think that's really solid for you but also this is the place where based on the evaluations and the heart level evaluations that you have done you could see yourself realigning at this particular point with different groupings of people pulling different friends and finding yourself in a different social structure and it's one that is a lot more in alignment that I think has been even at the beginning of the year things change you change you're taking risks Virgo probably more than you've taken in a long time and that will require the right kind of tribe and the right kind of support to help you this is also a good place where if your social profiles are not up to date you can use this mercury energy to take you forward and get those all updated the way of tech is definitely coming for us, especially as we move towards this energy of Saturn being in the energy of Aquarius. On the 20th, we've got a new moon happening at 28 degrees of Cancer as well. So again, more emphasis for light, heat, life, vitality, 
for what do you want next? We're replanting those seeds of intention in the area of the 11th house. Do you have your friends? Do you feel tapped in? Are you in alignment with your organization, right? Within organizations in general, we're having a lunar eclipse in Capricorn. So business could be changing and that may just be changing how you're connected to certain organizations. So these could be shifts, but what do you want in this particular area? What are your long range goals for yourself, Virgo? Plant those seeds of intention right here at this new moon. And again, if you feel like you're running into something that you don't have any say over be patient this energy will pass okay this is just a regular old new moon we don't have six months of living to do off of it like the eclipse energy so this one give it about four weeks okay as we close out this month, we see the sun moving into the energy of Leo, lighting up your 12th house space. So Leos are going to be over there partying. You know they are. You know how your neighbors do, right, when it's birthday time. But what this means for you is that you've got the sun bringing light, heat, life, and vitality, motivation, lots of warmth, lots of attention, lots of willing to burn off what doesn't need to be anymore in your 12th house space. This is your time to reevaluate before you enter into your next year. So what are you clearing out of the closet here in the 12th house? What doesn't belong here anymore? What are you willing to forgive and to transition out, right? As you take on these new businesses, as things happen with children, as we do these different things, we change and we shed a little layer of our onion. So where are you willing to shed? This sun will help you with that. It's also beautiful for retreats, spiritual work, massages, creativity. Ooh, do some poetry. Maybe you want to journal. Any of these things that live in the 12th house, the lights are shed on them. I'm also seeing here too, some of you may be doing research or you may be doing something where you are initially behind the scenes. Ah, here it is. You are doing something where you will initially be behind the scenes. So you are kind of invisible. But as we move into your next solar year, you become a lot more visible. It's almost like you're baking the bread over here, but you get to eat it as we come close to birthday time. So I look forward to seeing what that means for you, how it manifests for you this month, Virgo. So please leave me some details in the comment section down below. All right, you guys like this video, comment, share, subscribe. The solstice gifts are still available until they're gone. And the eat and greets will continue all month long. So I look forward to seeing you there as well. All right, Virgo, have a great month. Bye.